G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg. Sorry for sunken fishing trawler. Converting into a Flappy Wings expedition boat. Today we are finally lifting our port side wing up with all of our finished pulleys, our winch in the finished position and the cable the way that it's going to be laid out in the end. So the issue with lifting the wings from the top of the arm is as the wing gets closer and closer to being fully lifted, the top of the arm doesn't move. So the last foot of wing coming in towards the hull, the top of the arm only moves probably a quarter of an inch and you just physically can't generate enough lift on the um, winch pulling that up. So that's why we have to lift from the wing. So as the wing comes up, the cable is pulling it 90 degrees to the surface. So it's pulling it into the boat rather than trying to lift it up. And that's exactly what happens if you're lifting from the top of the arm. You're trying to pull the wing vertical rather than pulling it into the boat. So it's way safer doing it the way we're doing it. If we did it from the top of the arm, the, when the wing's sort of 80 to 90% closed, they'd end up flopping like that and there's no way you'd be able to stop that. So it's incredibly dangerous. Can you uh, explain why you've got the winch where you've got it? Because a lot of people, yes. say, why not put it on the top of the, you know, the sliders and you want direct force pulling, you know? Yeah, so, so does this need to be answered sarcastically as well? <laughs> Try, try to be the least amount oh. of psychism oh, in there as possible. All right, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> it's different for you because you've got it in your head and you this understand all this. So the rear roof on Brewpeg is very light. Um, it's the whole, the whole back end cabin is made out of three millimeter steel, which in our world is flimsy little sheet metal. <laughs> Ooh, um, starting with the sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> so if we were to put the winch on there and basically either, either um, you know, right over on the edge and pulling it straight down where we've put our top pulley, if we mounted it there, or if we mounted it back into the centre more and then had a pulley just going straight down, either way, you've basically got a, a point that you need to be really strong mounted onto something that's essentially tin foil in our world. <laughs> um, so it was never going to work. The wheelhouse roof, however, is bloody strong. So that's um, six millimetre steel. And you're on a corner, which, you know, you've got yeah. all that extra. So if you look up where you, where you can sort of see where the winch is mounted, just behind that white um, painted bit there, you've got the two angles of a vertical, plus you've got the um, six mil horizontal. So you've got a huge amount of strength in that one corner, and you've got the 12 millimetre doubler that the um, uh, that the winch is welded onto, so it's a massive amount of strength. And crossing, you know, a meter or so over to the to the um, sliders is an absolute non-issue. So um, that's why we've mounted it on the wheelhouse roof. We were never going to mount it on the back cabin. It was just there's just no way we were. We'd, the amount of bracing we'd have to do to make it strong enough just wasn't worth it. So that was always not happening. But from from an, a person like you know like who doesn't understand pulleys and, and winches and things like that, like me, yeah, like when you look at it, you've got to go from there down. Yep. And then you're going down and out. Yep. You, you've got the three pulleys. Yes. It, it seems really stupid. So, but <laughs> I think it's because I didn't understand how winches and pulleys work, like the physics of it. Can you yeah. explain why you've done it and how it works the way you've done it? So a pulley, a pulley, basic in its simplest term, the pulley just redirects um, a, a rope or a cable or something, you know, 90 degrees or whatever angle you need. So there's nothing really complex about what it does. Um, it does, every pulley that you put into a system does add a little bit of friction. Um, so you always have to account for that. Our wings weigh 380 kgs and our winches are rated at lifting um, close to two and a half tonne. Some people have asked why we don't just mount the winch down on the bullock and just lift the wing straight in with no pulleys, etc. Um, that's, that's certainly an option, um, but it's a difficult option to maintain over time because that's where a lot of seawater and everything is. Up on the roof, we're gonna get a lot less water. We're able to protect it a lot more. Um, having pulleys in the system does add a bit of friction, however um, we're using about 8% of our winch's capability, lifting capability, so having you know, another couple of percentage points of, of friction in the system because of our pulleys is not really an issue. The way that we don't lose efficiency with having um, three pulleys in the system is, is basically good pulley design. So you want to make sure your pulleys are, are really low friction pulleys, um, you don't want to have any sort of pulleys binding up and things like that, that's always going to cause you drama. Our pulleys have bushes or they're oil impregnated nylon, so the, the top two have bushes and the bottom one's oil impregnated nylon. They spin really freely, um, there's virtually no friction. So if I was to pull on the cable just pulling the wing in, for every kg of force that I pull in, I'm going to lose very, very little by going through our pulleys. I might lose probably 3% 3, 3 something like that overall by having all of our pulleys. So the winch itself isn't negatively affected by having three pulleys. Um, but it does allow us to position the winch in a completely different place than what it would be if we had to pull directly on the wing. Another thing people have asked is how do the stabilizers stay down locked and how do they stay up against the boat locked? Both have bolts, so when the, when the stabilizer is down, the top of the arm is bolted right onto the deck 
when the arm is up like it is right now, there's going to be a piece of uh, plate welded to the wing itself, um, and that's going to be onto the bulwark. Um, the other thing is, uh, one person actually um, asked a little bit of a confusion there, I think. When you're at sea, the, um, the wings are down the side of the boat. Um, when the boat's moving like this, how does how do the wings not flop around? And it's because it's, it's hard bolted. The arm, the wing and the, the bullock um, make a tripod. It's locked in. Hope that explains a few things for you guys. We've had a few questions about Ali, uh, the trial of our first like, real crew member trial um, not working out. Um, I just want to reassure everyone we're, we're completely fine with it. You know, we'd cross a desert for the right person and uh, we cross the desert for the chance of the person being the right person because uh, it's a really rare thing it's a it's not like someone who's a volunteer um or you know even a kind of a more long-term volunteer over a month um or a visitor um being a crew member is quite a unique thing um to be in your a situation in your life where you know you've got the means to do it um committed as much as we'd need you to be committed to it um but, but like us really you'd have to be someone who's very able to cope with the conditions and uh, how, how hard it is, you know, it's, it's like anything that's um, a bit demanding, that um, is very satisfying, it takes a lot of work um, and a big commitment, so yeah, no, we're good and we're really happy that um, Ellie made the right choice for her, you know, it must have been a really conflictual situation for her, you know, the, the possibility of studying marine life and uh, travelling to Antarctica and some of the things that she was very drawn to in the application um, versus being with family and uh, this amazing new era in her family's life um, but uh, I'm, I'm glad she made the right choice for her and, uh, and you know we're really supportive of that so if you're interested in applying for crew um, get online just look at our website uh, com, and um, use the alarm for the washing um, yeah, it's thrown an application, you never know, um, but it is going to take a little while to find the right person because it is a unique uh, position. But uh, thanks guys, let's go and get that washing. One of the things I'm eternally grateful to our Patreons for is the ability to turn pro. Brewpeg has gone professional, we've gone to the big league. We're no longer using random bits of cardboard to make templates, we're using black UV rated cardboard. Very good. Gonna cut some metal. Time to crack out the small grinder and nip a little bit of stainless off. Tacking. They're actually temporary pulleys. They're cast, 
cast iron with a bronze insert. Yeah, so they kind will, of. Um, they will rust. They're kind of weighty. Yeah, they will rust, but I have yeah. nylon replacements. I didn't realise it came with that. Yeah, that's good, eh? Yeah. Nice big um, switches. Yeah. Nice. This is the downstairs fan. Yeah. Downstairs fan that's mounted upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> the above deck, right? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, you, you don't is, have one big enough. This is new hair dryer. <laughs> it's gorgeous. For that, for that time, she just doesn't want to muck around. She's got a few seconds to spare <laughs> to dry her hair. So it's ventilation done. Yep. Wonder that. Nice movement. Yep. Great. <laughs> Twelve hundred cubic meters an hour. It's not bad, eh? It's good. Oh um. yeah. Beef stew. So that's gonna sit for a couple of hours. I've roasted the meat. Oh, have you? The soup bones, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, apparently, that's the best way to do it. And then you just let it, you know, sort of simmer for two hours, three hours. Let all the marrow come out. The goodness of the veggies go in. God, it smells good. So we'll do some noodles with that and have that for for lunch. I do like my noodles. This is all going swimmingly. I now need a bracket for my bracket. Okay. Uh, can we do it differently? Actually, yeah, no, I, don't. I, think you, I think that's perfect actually because I've got to do it sort of centered. I think that'll work out. Pretty close to spot on, I think. You gotta get it for the wires through here. Yeah, so I'm gonna do it. warm. Yeah, so it'd be hot, bit hot. Just My plan is to push that in there yeah. with a vertical flat bracket wow, in there because then I don't need anything else up there. Yeah, gorgeous. So it's held between this and the roof. Beautiful, darling. Yeah. Over about on the cross. Oh yes, yeah, slope it. Okay. Yeah, just push it in like 
don't know, 15 mil or something. Oh yeah, it actually sits out from here, yeah. so yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Yep, yep. 30 mil, bud. 25? 30? I could always take more out, so I'll do 25 and then if we need to do another lot, I can do another slice. I just need to slice the tack. Go with that. This is a new one. Oh, yeah. This right, is a, um, a thick one, actually. Right. Do you want some soup? Or yeah, I'm starving. I'm carry on. Um, so actually, I'll, I'll just cut that off. You cut that and I'll put some noodles on and yep. I'll see you in there. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, honey. Gonna be our top bracket pretty straightforward nice and simple nice and strong and the pipe comes right up in this gap here so we can always see what's going on so it's really easy to re-thread anything if we need to right with our pulleys almost complete I need to climb back up on the roof and um, mark out the angle that this top pulley has to go onto the doubler at the top there because it's gonna be a bit of a weird angle you're gonna have to trim some of this off to make it fit so let's go and figure that out Off to one side. Yeah. When it's flush on the doubler, it's off to one side. So what we need to do is rotate it slightly like that and tip it, and that makes it perfect for the centre of the pipe. What about the angle of the winch? Because you're putting that. That's uh, why I've got a tied right here. All oh, right. I was going to trim a bit of the left hand side off. Well, this oh, side. Right. Okay, okay. But I'm just wondering, maybe, maybe don't bother. It would be nice though. No, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. It's worth just doing it, eh? Yeah. Um, I just, like, cool. Unless it's tight. I just tied it off. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. You wanna write through? Yeah. I'm just gonna, I'll take this down and I'll trim the bottom off. And then I'll bring it back up. Oh, what a star. Inside out and upside down No stress, I'ma clean up this mess La like Alice This is lining up, sweet First hand me scissors I think that's pretty good, this. Do you want to have a check? Then ring at the heavy artillery Oh, just this is my little Oh, 
Oh yeah. So centered there and then also Perfect. that. I can put a bit more roof back in. So like along here? Yeah. Alright. See where so the line sort of is? swings just to the cheek here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. And then right. it matches underneath the earth clamp just there. A bit more work. A little bit more work, but that means we have more roof. I like the idea because that's one of the downsides of this design is it's right over the door. Yeah. And you're losing roof for rain protection. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. I'm sure this will block some of it though. Yeah, and we'll have, we'll have a lip like this 100mm yeah, right here around, yeah. all the way around. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a bit of work to it, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. That's why we need all the wind. Yeah. Because it's really great for all it's that work. It's best for MIG welding. Yeah. <laughs> Cables are just different. <laughs> pretty happy with those brackets it's kind of exactly the picture I had in my mind um, when I started designing them months and months ago in my head so what I need to do now is um, finish up what we're going to do with the winches we've decided to change our mounting for the winches slightly um, rather than mount it flat on the wheelhouse roof and then have it going over that lip we were going to modify the lip we're not going to do any of that anymore we're actually going to make a stronger bracket because um, it was only six mil and it was only three m8 and I don't think that that's strong enough to handle a direct impact with a plane so probably use 12 mil then. So I take it you're agreeing with me that the three bolts are not enough? The, the three eight mil toughened steel? I'm sure those three tiny little ridiculously small M8 bolts would have been fine ish in certain circumstances if you know corrosion prevention and all that sort of stuff was happening. Excuse me, excuse me, I'm doing very important things here. Right, so we'll put some bigger um, plate up there and maybe throw a couple of extra bolts in. It's too windy for paper. Degrees is that angle there. 20 plus 34, 124. So that angle there must be 1, 2, 4, and it was 34. My plan is to replicate this pretty wee thin 6mm bracket out of something a little bit more brew peg, a bit of 12mm sheet.
there we have it. One Butty brew peg sized bracket. So that's a 12 mil steel bracket um, on a 12 mil doubler. So that's gonna be more than strong enough what we need. And what I've done is I've actually reversed the winch so that when it's lifting, when I press up to lift the wings up, it's rolling it up from the top of the drum up here so that it gives me more clearance without having to lift the winch up higher. Also puts the motor on the inside, which is quite neat. Um, won't work on the other side, it'll be flipped around, but that won't matter. It's all gonna be inside a box. But what I've done, obviously notched out this here, put a mag drill into the corners and then just ground it out with the grinder. And then the cable is going to run straight from here down to our stainless pulley down here. Runs all the way down the pipe that you can see maybe on the inside down there. You can see the pipe running vertical all the way down um, beside the slider. Goes to the stainless pulley on the bork. And then heads out to the wing. How's that? You can sort of see where the pulley is on the wing. I've got to weld that pulley on yet, so we'll drop the wing down and we'll get that welded on. And then it's just hooked the cable up, we're ready to go and try and lift this thing up and down. Hello. Hello. Woo, look at that. Pretty booty, eh? Oh. So where does this go? Uh, we don't actually need it anymore. It's Where are not... you running it then? So it comes off the top here and goes straight down there. When it swings from side to side, it doesn't actually get in the way of anything. <laughs> That's awesome. But I will probably put it on. I'll make something out here and put it on, but we don't need it. So that could be happen later. Yeah, I actually think this is just something that can fail. Yeah. Like, I agree. it's tacked up. I just need to go through and weld it. But I'm going to buzz this off so I can weld onto onto the doubler. Get rid of the paint. Oh yeah. Um, and I need to swap the flux core. This will just tack to the stainless wire. So. Would you want me to buzz it, buzz it off while you change the wire over? Uh, yeah. Got a punch there? Yeah, um, right, I need a, uh, if you're past the gas lead up, if you can plug it in. Yeah. You like living on the edge, don't you, darling? <laughs> <laughs> going a bit higher than you're supposed to. Yeah. So 2112 is the setting for 2112 is the settings for 8 mil and this is 12 mil so I'm just going a bit hotter. Well you've got a bit of thickness there eh? Uh, this welder can do 18, 11 millimeters is the maximum it can weld. But 8 millimeters is what they guarantee and, and 11 millimeters is what the settings will allow. But you can do you do thicker. You just got to do more runs, which is what I always end up doing on them. Okay, welding. Um, it's got a hole, you know? Yeah. Fill your damn holes up. Uh, right, so it's uh, next step is sandblast, paint, bolt it all together. I might have to do a dimple down here, just get rid of a little bit of that just to be sure. To be sure, to be sure. It's like 10 mil. Oh, just a okay. little scallop oh. just to give some appearance. Like it doesn't hit, but it's probably a couple of mil right over the far side. So I'll just take 10 mil out just to give it some room.
occasion. This will be the first time we've lifted it with all the bits that are needed like in place and ready to go. So our winch is there, our pulleys are there, our rope's there, all of the alignment's done and we're ready to go. That's cool. <laughs> What we've discovered is just down in the bottom here, when the wing's fully out, this wire touches on the steel. So I need to nip a bit more of this out. Um, and I also can build in the side a bit more here. We don't need so much width. So my plan is to build um, a, like a, get some round stainless bar, probably some 16 mil stainless bar. And I'll do a quite a big deep oval, um, weld them all together, put that in the side. And that's what the cable's gonna go in and out of. So the cable theoretically will never touch mild steel. If it, if it ever rubs, which it shouldn't, but if it ever rubs, it's gonna hit stainless. Um, and then I'll build all of the mild steel in to suit that. So there'll only be a very small gap when we're finished. So there's a few things to do, isn't there? Close yep. um, the other side in. Close this side, put in the plastic sliders. Uh, sorry, the plastic wear strips. You can see we've had this strip in. Just sort of sitting there. Yeah, and it worked great. And um, there's a lot of noise because there's a bow on this side. Yeah. Um, this side this side is bowed back towards the back of the boat about three or four millimetres. So I'm going to pull it forward about five mil between here and the handrail. I'll put my endless chain and just compress it um, and, and pull this forward slightly. And then I'll build all the sides in and weld it like that. So that'll hold this in the position I want. And you've got to weld that bottom there. Yeah, I've got to weld the bottom around properly in that. Yeah. So I'll probably get the sandblaster up here soon and, and you know give all of this a good blast up so that I can get you know my last final welds in. You're doing another weld on the doubler, right? I want to do another run around the doubler. I want to blast this and do three runs around the outside of this guy. Um, and then I'm going to build in the side put it in a vertical so same as what we've got on this side but I'm going to do one over here put in a vertical on that one and I also want to make a scupper in here as well because water's going to come down from the front hit this vertical oh, right. and it'll sit there and rust the boat out so yeah, I'm going to put a scupper there so that it just goes straight over the side. This is my GoPro selfie stick. Damien takes selfie sticks very seriously. Keep falling off the roof. One of the challenges we had was trying to get a GoPro to be able to capture shots on the side so I got a piece of two meter long aluminium um, box section Trev put this um, little doodacky, he made this piece of threaded rod. That's a Trev doodacky? This is Trev's doodacky. Oh, he's, he's away sailing at the moment, yes. by the way. Yes, yeah. Trev's, Trev's out gallivanting around. Yep. Um, this here locks onto the roof and this here locks onto the edge. Between those it holds it solid and the GoPro's basically two metres out the side of the boat. I do think you're taking this uh, selfie stick thing a little bit too seriously. Well, I don't want my selfie stick to break, so I just figured may as well over engineer it. <laughs> but you're so concerned about how you look. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely, that's me. <laughs> the wing now works. We've got our system organised. We now know what we're building, and we're just going to duplicate that onto the second wing. We are running our uh, Patreon live feed this weekend, so our monthly live feed's happening this weekend. If you're um, you know, a Patreon and you want to join us on that, either on Zoom or on YouTube Live like we do every month, we'll send the normal reminders out. If you're not a Patreon and you'd love to be caught up real time what we're doing on the build, become a Patreon, we'd love to have you on board and it helps us carry on with what we're doing and get this build um, you know, working and, and happening. A couple of things that we're gonna catch you up on. Um, Ali, everything that happened there, what we're doing with our crew and our plans in that sense. And also, to Naz or not to Naz, um, we have some IT stuff that we wanna discuss with you guys. So we'll see you then. You got ice like summer sky If it's my good kill I die And now it starts to rain So let's enjoy it I can't